All right, we're going to be looking at fixed position again, and um, we did look at it when we looked at fo Google Fonts and Font Awesome, and we had that little home that we could use to get us back to the top of the page. And we're going to just going to do a very similar thing here, just looking at a few more properties in CSS, but also the idea that that one was linking us inside of our document, and this one we will be linking to an external document, and really. It's no different. Um, fixed positioning is just placing it somewhere on the page. But let's look at what we've got to start with. So I've got this, so the adventures of Robinson Crusoe. And we know that there were a lot of adventures and we start scrolling and wow, 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 this is really long. I need something. If I'm going to put anything in this page, I definitely want to have some sort of, I want it to be sticky. I want it to be fix because this is going to involve a lot of scrolling and that goes for most of the time you won't see a very long story done done like this but you might have infinite products that you're selling or you know infinite displays of people's design um, design artifacts and things so yes it's nice to be able to do a fixed position and especially if you want if you're trying to get them off the page like say you're trying to you have a call to action button and you're trying to get them to go sign up for something you don't want that to get lost at the top of the page so that's what this is about um, so what we have we have we're given an index with it's all been styled so we don't really have to worry about that we've got a style sheet attached we've just got all this content um, and um, we actually even have um, a little book here and it's at the very top and you can see it. it's just tiny little book here it hasn't been styled yet but that book will give us a link to the full book so we actually haven't taken the full book and put it on this page but if you really wanted to read it we we've got you an external link to it and this really might be something like you might have a social media link or a set of media links about the book like um, going to people discussing it on Twitter or people talking about it on Facebook. So this could be an example of where you have you would have a fixed a fixed link to a to social media. So um, the only thing that we need to do in this, there's not a lot to do, is just give a style to that icon. It's a font awesome icon and um, we can just add that to the bottom, you know, um, style icon just add that and all we're doing is is we're giving it some size we're giving it um, a color because you know it's a, it's a font basically we can do all of our font properties on it we're setting the position to fixed and we're setting it two percent from the top two percent from the right and we're giving it a pointer so the pointer cursor sometimes things you know there's a lot of things the browser will put that pointer on for you, it, like on links. Basically, it puts out a little finger. So let's see if I take that off and see what happens. If we put this over here. Oh, we're getting it anyways because it's a link. So we probably don't even really need it. But sometimes you might put um, some tag on your page that you want to be clickable, but it's not made clickable automatically by the browser. Um, you have this cursor pointer and there's a number of cursor options there so um, just wanted to include that so we've got our we've got our home and as we scroll you can see it stays there and as long as I you know anytime I want I can go to the source and um, start reading it here in a more readable way so that's what that this is about very short exercise. All right, I'm going to just save this. So let's see, there's not much to it. Notice I do kind of try to give it the messages to get something about what I've done because we haven't learned that here so much, but get is for versioning control and it does allow us to um, to roll back so let's go just take a quick look at that hold on a sec all right just say we wanted to go quickly to our uh, github.com repo out on the internet 
and take a look at history. So one way we can do that is Command Shift P or Control Shift P on Windows to pull up the command editor. And then you could start typing open and you'll see open in GitHub project. So I can just click on that and it will actually take me to the project that I'm working on in GitHub. So the current Git project locally is open in GitHub. And then if you click on a file out here, you can take a look at history. And this is where you'll see your messages. Um, so you can see these are messages that have occurred over the last couple of days. And then these, these are sort of IDs, SHA IDs, unique IDs. And you can use those to roll back. So let's say I decided, wow, I've, I really want to roll back to that day when I added the exercise. Um, and, you know, I've, I've really messed up and I just want to roll back. You can use these to run a command on the command line to do that rollback. If you ever just want to roll back to the last, you know, you just have some code you haven't committed or put in staging, you can always do get checkout and then the file name. But if you really wanted to roll back all the files to a certain date or a single file to a certain date, you can, these messages that you include with your commit can be helpful in identifying that. So that's the reason why we have those. All right, I think we are good on this um, on this assignment.